Not every star is the same, but all of them get their power to keep shining nearly in the same way, except the dark stars. Long, a really long time ago, the universe was not how it looks now. Just after 200 million years from the Big Bang, the universe was still fiery and in that fire, the first stars started to form and shine. During the baby stage, universe was much smaller. The small universe still had the same amount of energy that there is now. In the dense environment, an extremely mysterious substance, a substance that we now call dark matter, ran amok in the infant galaxies. Scientists think that out of that rich environment, a new breed of star was born, the dark stars. Dark stars are kind of a misnomer. They're not really dark. In fact, they're like some of the biggest and brightest stars in the universe. But however big the size may be, we have never discovered one. These enormous first generation stars were not anything like the stars we see in the night sky. They used to get their tremendous power in a different way, unlike the normal stars like our sun. Dark stars may hold the key to understanding the universe and its beginning. Everything that there is today in the universe, you, me, that book, that house, even the galaxies in the distant part of the universe makes up only 5% of what is known to be out there. The majority, about 68%, is the unknown driver that scientists believe is causing the accelerating expansion of the universe, the dark energy. Dark energy does not seem to interact with normal type of matter our world is composed of, called baryonic matter, even gravitationally. The rest 27% is another weird thing, that is dark matter. Hundreds of dark matter particles, according to many predictions, zip through our bodies every second. Fortunately for us, this type of matter, though it follows the laws of gravity, does not interact with the baryons our bodies are composed of. Unfortunately, it does not interact with any of the entire 5% of the universe that we can see. That's why for the researchers, this makes it extremely difficult to study. Dark matter does not even emit light, so we cannot directly observe it. It can only be probed indirectly through its gravitational effects, such as the way it bends light around the massive galaxies. For the most part, the researchers must rely on models to make informed predictions about the nature of this elusive material. A leading theory on dark matter predicts the substance is a wimp. Before you get any weird ideas, this swim does not mean a weak and cowardly or unadventurous person. Or does it? Dark matter is in the form of weakly interacting massive particles, WIMPs for short. This class of particles is a natural sequence of the idea of supersymmetry, which is a part of the accepted standard model of particle physics, explaining how particles interact with each other and the fundamental forces of the universe. Supersymmetry is actually the theory that proposes each type of particle has an identical opposite charge partner called an antiparticle. But WIMPs have no charge. They act as their own antiparticles. Actually, it's not okay to call particles and antiparticles partners. They're more like enemies. When they collide, they collide with a bang and destroy each other in a shower of light, energy and in some cases, newer and lighter particles. The universe and the first stars that were born in the universe did not form overnight. It took more than 200 to 400 million years after Big Bang for the universe to be in the right conditions for forming stars. Scientists believe that dark matter played the most vital role to make universe ripe enough to form stars. Dark matter then got in the grasp of gravity but unabated by the interactions with light and baryonic matter started to cluster in patches. Baryonic matter quickly followed and soon formed clumps a million times more massive than the sun. These many halos, as they are termed, became the nurseries for the first generation of stars and they would eventually evolve into galaxies. Back then the universe was a denser and more compact place and the wimp danced in a violent but beautiful cosmic party. But that was not a happy one. In that party, everyone started to frequently annihilating each other in energistic blasts. Wimps could have been caught in the gravitational clutches of giant gas clouds during this time 
and as these clouds condensed to form early stars, they would have taken the wimps along with them. Just like everything else in the universe, dark stars also are supported by specifically balanced forces. Born in the dense early universe, these stars may have started out the size of our sun, but could have quickly grown a million times larger as they collected more material from their surroundings. But because they were heated in a different way, they were able to grow to much larger sizes than normal stars. These dark stars could have been puffy giants. If one replaced our sun, its extent would reach out past the orbit of Saturn. Yet despite their immense size, it would not have taken much dark matter to fuel them. According to Dr. Catherine Fress, a theoretical physicist at the University of Michigan, dark stars are almost entirely made of hydrogen. Only one part in a thousand is dark matter. She has dedicated a lot of her life into studying these unknowns. She also thinks even at such small amount, the dark matter fuel in dark stars is likely to power that star for millions or even billions of years. But as the last swims and I yet, the star would have nothing remaining to counteract the force of gravity and so it would begin to contract again. Relatively speaking, the smaller dark stars or those ones with only 100 times the mass of the sun would start nuclear fusion giving them the power to sustain life as an active star a bit longer. But in today's expanded universe, the density of dark matter is much too low for it to power stars in the way it might have near the beginning. Actually, even now dark matter passes through the sun and earth, then it collapses to the center where it annihilates. But it's not providing a heat source because there is not enough of it. Dark stars can exist even now only at the center of galaxies where the dark matter density is highest. Some scientists have predicted that there may be a few wimp burners, white dwarfs and neutron stars at the center of galaxies that they have captured enough dark matter to at least partially fuel them. This extra power source likely would change the evolution and appearance of star. They may act like rather young stars while being nearly as old as the universe itself. Typically, the stars fade and cool at the end of their lives, but the additional source of dark matter fuel would keep them abnormally hot, making them look much younger than they actually are. Theoretically, these stars should be observable, though none have been found to that. Eventually, all dark stars would have collapsed, or if any is still lurking out there, they would also turn into black holes. These unique stellar objects might help solve a long-standing mystery in the early universe, the origin of supermassive black holes. As the dark stars could grow much larger than a typical star, they would turn into much larger black holes. But the problem is finding one. No current telescope is powerful enough to see a dark star in the early universe. But this will change soon. The James Webb Space Telescope, the successor of Hubble, is already as its place and also have given us its first image. With a 6.5 meter primary mirror, and special instruments built for capturing infrared light, the James Webb should be able to see proto galaxies and dark stars should they exist in the early universe. While dark stars remain in the theoretical realm for now, their existence is inferred based on real science and it may not be long until the first ones are detected.